Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 100. I'm your host, James Shotwell, and I think I should start with an apology. It has been a few weeks since the last episode of Inside Music, and I have a good reason, even though you might not want to hear it. When we were last together, I told you that episode 100 was going to be a big celebration of how the show got started. I was going to have guest Matt Brown on to talk about you know, the origins of the show and what he's doing at Holix and all of that jazz, but... As soon as I said it, I knew something was going to go wrong, and that is precisely what happened. Life got a little crazy, Matt couldn't do the podcast, then Christmas happened, then New Year's happened, then I had to speak at a conference in Los Angeles, and before I knew it, an entire month had passed without a new episode of Inside Music. And let me tell you, I miss this show. I don't know uh, if I can speak for all of you. I hope some of you missed the show. I hope you've been wondering where it's at. But I know that I've missed it because this show is my probably my favorite thing to do in my career. I love getting to talk to people. And this is episode 100. This is the big celebration. At this point, if you've listened to every episode of Inside Music, you've heard several days worth of conversation about life in the music industry. And I think that's pretty awesome. When I was coming up, I always wanted to know what it was like for people who actually worked in the music industry. And now I'm able to provide you, the listener, and myself with that insight. It's kind of cool. For today's episode, we're not doing the map around conversation, though hopefully we'll get there. Instead, I'm talking to a good friend of mine. By good friend, I mean somebody I know over Twitter who I have spoken with a lot via the internet. His name is Andy Bain, and he is the vocalist slash co-founder of the band Danger Kids. And if you don't know who Danger Kids are, they are an alternative hard rock band, I guess is the best way to describe it, who use elements of a whole bunch of different genres to make their sound unique. They have a lot of comparisons to bands like Linkin Park, but their new album, Blacklist, which arrives in stores this week through Paid Vacation records is not quite a record you would think Linkin Park could make. It's a heavy record. There are elements of rap and the new metal sound that made that band big, but there's also a whole lot of other stuff going on. There's some punk, there's some lighter affair, there's even an acoustic track. There's there's a lot of stuff going on in this record, and I think it's a huge step forward for the band and one of the best albums to help kickstart this year of music that we've just begun. So Andy and I are going to talk about the creation of Blacklist, the history of Danger Kids, why they left Rise Records, how they found their new label, and everything else that goes on in that. And if you like it and you want to hear more, you definitely need to check out Danger Kids' new album, Blacklist, when it arrives this Friday. But you can also catch the band on tour with Falling in Reverse, Issues and Motionless and White now until the middle of February. If you're listening to this after the middle of February, I'm sure they've already announced another tour, and if you look up their socials, I'm sure there are dates to be found there. Now, before we get to the episode, I do have to make a few quick announcements. First and foremost, this episode of Inside Music, like all episodes of Inside Music, is only made possible by Holix, the music industry's leading digital promotional distribution service. Now, what that means is that Holix works with record labels, independent artists, managers, and a whole slew of other industry professionals to share new and unreleased music without fear of piracy. Should leaks occur, Holix has state-of-the-art technology that can not only find the people responsible for the leaks, but also aid you in taking down unwanted links from the internet. For more information on Holix and access to a free 30-day trial, visit holix.com. That's H-A-U-L-I-X.com. I also want you to be following the show on Twitter. Now that Inside Music is back in full swing, and yes, we are back in full swing, there will be another episode next week and the week after that and the week after that for the foreseeable future, so you should probably be following us on Twitter. It's at Inside Music Pod, at Inside Music P-O-D. Follow us on there for updates about upcoming guests, the music related to the guests who are on the show, news about life in the industry, and a whole bunch of tips and survival tricks to making a career in the entertainment industry. Now, I think that's all I have to say, but I do want to real quick thank you so much for your continued support of Inside Music. I know that there have been a few pauses, there's been a few breaks in the show. I like to think of them as seasons. We've taken at least two major breaks to over the first hundred episodes, so let's just call those two seasons of the show, and this is the season premiere of the third season of Inside Music, and I think it's going to be the best one yet. I've got some very cool guests on the horizon and some people you might not have heard of in the interim. So just stick around, stay tuned, follow us on Twitter, subscribe on iTunes, and right now, just sit back and enjoy my conversation with Andy from Danger Kids. Okay? Enjoy the show. Yo, 
Yep, we're in Texas, running away from Houston to um, we're about two hours out from Dallas, I think. So that means you've been on the road for several hours at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, about an hour and a half, I think, so far. It's not too bad. <laughs> Texas, you never really understand how big Texas is until you visit. Oh my god, yeah, it's huge. It just takes like hours and hours to get across. <laughs> <laughs> especially especially being from the Midwest where like eight hours will get you states away. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. It's like I've been through Texas, I don't know how many times now, and it still surprises me how long it takes. <laughs> Well, I'm excited to get to have this conversation with you, man, because I really dig the album and I've been wanting to have you on the show because I feel like we follow each other on Twitter forever now and we've never actually had yeah, like a conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. our TM uh, earlier sent me your phone number and it was James Todd. I was like, oh, yeah, I know him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those, you know, the, so this podcast is supposed to do like episode 100 like a month ago and that like the guest fell apart and so i've been waiting to do episode 100 and then i realized the album was coming up fast and i was like oh maybe this is the time maybe this is like fate telling me to finally talk to andy oh so this is episode 100 That's this will tight. be episode 100 okay cool <laughs> um yeah and it'll it'll come out soon because i know the, the album's coming up and you guys you're on the road right now what is what is the tour mm-hmm. you're on right now uh, the tour is called the End Is Here Tour, and it's with um, Falling Reverse, Motionless and White Issues, Us, and Dead Girls Academy. I don't think I've ever heard Dead Girls Academy. They are brand new. They don't have an album out or anything yet. Um, uh, cool. But they, uh, yeah, they're like, uh, they're pretty cool though. They're pretty tight. How long have you guys been on this run? Um, this is only like it started January thirteenth. Um, so it was like this. Six day, six show. Yeah, six day, six day. It's been six days at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least. <laughs> and then you guys are on this through like early February, right? Like in yeah, in February twelfth, I think. Okay, okay. There you go. Yeah. So, so you're really in the beginning phases of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still a little new, like the store. Like we're just now getting to like know everyone and like getting names down and stuff which i'm terrible with so. <laughs> <laughs> i'm yeah i'm bad about that too when i when i used to tour i'd always i can know everyone that's like in my crew and maybe like the band we talk to the most often and every, everyone else i'm i just feel bad yeah and there's like a lot of crew on this tour because everyone has like a lot of production and stuff like mm. issues has a giant fucking pirate ship <laughs> on stage <laughs> and it's like so I, all the bands have so many crew I, there's still a couple i haven't like got to talk to yet but You'll get there. You got time. You got like a month. Yeah, yeah. You got plenty of time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, man. I, uh, I've i been able to spend... I've spent like a month with this album already. I feel like I'm a, I'm a little lucky in that way. <laughs> oh, sorry. What'd you say? I missed that. Oh, sorry. I said I've, I've been able to spend about a month with Blacklist already. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah All right, I've, nice. I've been jamming it out. I've been listening. You know, it's funny because... I think I think in June of 2016, I had my buddy Evan from Abby and Row on the show, and he was bragging uh-huh. about how you guys played them the record. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, "You have yeah. to have them on to talk to you about it." And he was like trying to he was like trying to tell us about the album without really giving anything away. He was like, "Well, <laughs> he was like trying to describe a record that's not only not his, but he was like, I don't even know when they're going to release it. But let me tell you what I know." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, those guys are awesome. They're they're still probably my favorite band we toured with, and it was our headliner. It was just us and them. So it was like a lot of tours. You don't really get the kick at everyone until like the last week. It's like fuck. Why didn't we do this earlier? You know. But like with them, since we were the only two bands on it, and there were like locals every day, it was like just right from the get go. We like totally clicked, and um, yeah, they're just like awesome dudes. We're gonna see their guitarist Jordan in like a week, and uh, he's coming up the Pittsburgh show. Um, so excited to see him again. Yeah, I love all those guys. Yeah, he told us some stories about like camping with you guys and going out to the <laughs> yeah. woods. Yeah, the camping was kind of a disaster, but <laughs> it, was, it was fun. <laughs> I just love the mental picture of like 10 band people camping, like just somewhere around. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, we like fucking, we took the wrong route and we like went the wrong way. And so we're like an hour into the, because it's like way away from nowhere. And we're like an hour in and we realized it took the wrong way because we're like on top of this mountain like no joke and it's like one lane and we're in a van and trailer and it's like gravel and i was like uh i'm not i'm not so sure about this <laughs> so they went the other way they got there sooner so by the time we got there it was already dark couldn't see shit and then woke up and i was just like soaked in rain and it was like 35 degrees or some shit <laughs> so i was like i'm getting hypothermia <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. And and I, I was jealous. Now, is the version of the album they heard back then the same one that people are getting now? Has it changed in six months? 
Um, Tyler has done a few different mixes, so there might – you might have the most recent one. He's, he's done it a little while ago, but, um, like, the one I have on my phone is, like, the old mix. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, so, yeah, if not, I'll make sure to send you over the most current one after this if you want it. Uh, yeah, I, I love listening to the way your guys' music kind of progresses because you've always been one of those bands that, especially when you were first starting out, you were pretty transparent about, like, here's the first version of this song, and then we got to kind of hear your material evolve. Yeah, yeah. When we started out, we really didn't know what we were doing. Like, it started out as not a joke, but just we weren't going to take it that seriously because we've all been in other bands for years and just tried and tried and, you know, never really gained any traction or anything happened and then we started this we're like we're not even gonna play any shows we're just gonna like make some music put it online you know hopefully people like it and then like we start we wrote a few songs like then we should play some shows you know like it wouldn't hurt and then we put that countdown video up and it's just like blew up overnight and we're like and we had like no jokes like record labels talking to us within the next few days and i was like i was in a band before this for eight years and never talked to a single record label <laughs> so it was just like such a whirlwind and it happened so quick and so we we put out those first few songs and they were like early they're basically like demos and then you know eventually put out like the uh the studio version and stuff later but uh yeah it's been a pretty interesting ride <laughs> in a sh- in an interesting ride in a, like a really small amount of time oh yeah yeah like it, it started so quick and like um i mean we went on our first tour it was huge with uh sleep with sirens and that was our first tour. I got literally our third show we ever played was the first day of that tour in front of like 1500 people in Orlando at house of blues. It's just like, what am I doing? Like what happened? What led to this point? And I mean, we did that tour. We didn't have an album to sell. We had no, like, we had nothing to sell the merchant besides like two t-shirts. And it was just like, we were that new. We played, I think four songs. And that was all we had. Oh, amazing. I, uh, I remember when you guys went on that tour, because you know, obviously I was following you through work at Under the Gun at the time, and I was just like, but mm-hmm. what, do, what, do they ha- what do they do? Like, what, do they have songs? Do they have material? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm excited, but like, how do you just have two songs? <laughs> yeah, it was so random. Like, we had a couple in the bag. We might have had like a fifth song, but we weren't like comfortable playing it live yet, because we, I mean, we only played two shows, you know, and we didn't get to practice a whole lot before that tour. And, um, so yeah, I think I'm pretty sure we only played four songs, and it was like a pretty short set, but <laughs> it was fun. It was a blast. Oh, well, that's yeah, that's awesome. I like hearing that story because I do remember when like the first song started to go online, and it was like a wildfire in a way that not a lot of bands kind of pull off. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was really fun too because we didn't even tell like a lot of like family and friends what we were even doing. We would just been because we started working on like the first song. I think Life Escapes was the first song we did together. And um, we started working on it probably six months before we put it out. And we just kind of put it on the back burner for a little while because we all had other stuff going on. And um, then we got back to it. And then, uh, yeah, it was just so great. We put out Countdown first and then woke up and there was like 5,000 views. And we're like, is that normal? Like, I never had a video on YouTube, like a music video on YouTube in any of my old bands. And I was like, this isn't normal, right? That's like quite a bit for like, I mean, we put up, like, we really, let's just say we released it at like 8 p.m on like Sunday, we put up our Facebook then, our Twitter, our Tumblr, like our Instagram, all that stuff. And like, so none of it had any followers at all. And then we woke up and it was just like, what the hell? Like, how did anyone even find out about it? Besides like us, you know, personally tweeting about it and stuff. So yeah, it was so, so crazy. And it was one of those things where at first I didn't, as, as someone that was reporting on it, like it was such a polished song that you were like, these guys have to, it has to be someone else kind of like a side project. So that was also kind of like a wrench in it where everyone was like, who is this band? Who are they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I like, I, I was in another band at the time I started with like, uh, cause basically like before we released that, I moved away and I lived in Indiana for a couple of years and kind of stopped doing music altogether. And then um, I moved back to Ohio and like hooked up with Tyler, like the first day I was back. Like, and, um, he was like, oh, you got to check out this music I'm working on. You're going to be in it. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, like, I started another, like, project, too, with some friends that were in my old band and stuff. And then um, we put out songs right about the same time. And then Danger Kids just, like, became really, real, really quick, where the other band really was just, like, for fun. And so, yeah, all my time went to Danger Kids. And it's just, like, it's, it's it still, like, blows my mind how it all worked out. And now here we are sitting, uh, what is it, like mm, less than 10 days from album two. Yes, I think it's 
eight days away now, I think. Yeah, I guess it's Thursday. Like, so, yeah, yeah, eight days. Eight days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm so stoked. Like, it's, <laughs> the album seems like it was never going to come out. <laughs> but now it's uh, it's ready. Like, it's, it's so weird. Like, everything's, like, kicking into high gear right now. Like, we're doing, like, like interviews and podcasts and stuff like this. And then um, we haven't experienced that since, you know, the first album came out in 2013. So it's like, oh, yeah, this is what it's like. We have, like, interviews to do and, like, people to talk to. And we have an album to promote again, you know, new music. And it's just so exciting. I'm so stoked. Yeah, you guys, you guys kind of did something interesting where you kind of got through the first album cycle, and then, like you said, you did the Savvy and Road tour last year, where you just kind of flew under the radar and just kind of kept doing your thing. Yeah, it was kind of funny. Like a lot of people um, just assumed we broke up, and uh, I mean, we have like a good amount of like uh, likes on Facebook and stuff, but you know how Facebook is nowadays. You make a post and like, you know, thirty people see it. It's like, well, for an extra buck, for five bucks, you know, a hundred people will see it. It's just like whatever so a lot we were like posting about the tour but a lot of people a lot of our fans didn't even know about it and um it was so funny though like we were like two days before we released um things be different video like there was like three tweets that day like man sucks danger kids broke up like they're one of my favorite bands and like the next day we released a new song and, uh so in a, in a weird way it kind of works i mean it was really unintentional but um it was, I guess it's a good thing if people are talking about you at all. And there was a bunch of people discussing if we broke up. And then, you know, two days later, we released a new song and kind of blew a bunch of people's minds. So it was pretty fun. I think at one point I might have even like reached out to somebody that repped you guys and been like, so what are they doing? Like, <laughs> are they a band? Like, should I be watching for something? <laughs> yeah. Like we had the album done for a while. And um, and that was what I, I mean, was like, hearing. Really... I was hearing like they have yeah. an album. It's, it's, they have it. <laughs> Yeah, and we were, like, right on the verge of, like, like you know, like, uh, like we did the tour, like, the I Prevail tour last year, and we played two songs from this album, and um, we were like, you know, it should be coming out this October, and then the next tour we did in October, like, it should be coming out in December, and then, you know, we did the album Road tour, like, hopefully it'll come out in June or July, and now it's, like, you know, Dece or January now, and it's uh, just now coming out, but um, it was a lot of, like, really good problems to have behind the scenes, like, we... Um, the label we signed to now is absolutely awesome and it was totally worth the wait and working it out and stuff. So Yeah, so I, I wanna talk about I wanna talk about this weird road to release of this album has had and finding this new label. So was your was your first mm -hmm. was your first deal just a one off album deal and you chose not to come back or what what happened? It was, yeah. We had a one album deal with Rise and Rise was absolutely awesome. Like I, I love those guys. They um were they're just like the nicest people in the world and we had a really great experience with them. And it was a, I mean, a hell of a launch pad to release an album on, you know, like we, you instantly gain access to their, like Rise has like a built-in fan base. They're one of those labels that people will listen to anything they put out. And um, so, yeah, they're all great people there and stuff. And they did, um, they were still interested in working with us, but we had a few other offers at the time. And I mean, that's kind of always been the plan to kind of see, you know, do a one album deal with them and kind of see, you know, if it even does well at all. And thankfully it did. Um, but yeah, so we had a few other label offers and everything just like took some time looking into. Um, and the label we're on now, it's called Paid Vacation. I don't know how much I can say about it yet just because they haven't really announced the label at all. But um, so I'll let them do that. So, but um, basically it's a brand new label and the people behind it are absolutely awesome and we trust them 110%. And it was a very, very good deal. And um, it had the stuff that we were looking for as a band. Like, um, we're getting a, a solid radio push with Kill Everything starting, like, next week, basically. And that was something we always – something that was really important to us. Um, so, yeah, the, just the labels and the, the – I mean, the, uh, the details in this new record deal are just absolutely awesome and very artist-friendly. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to, like – we're the first release on their label, and um, I can't wait to see, you know, what happens with them and us. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to working with them. Yeah, you know, I figured that there has to be something up with this new label of yours because you, you've always struck me as uh, the kind of band that you, you don't make a move unless you're 100% certain about what it's going to be. Like, it all seems very planned out. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, that plan took a little longer than expected. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm True. really happy where we landed. Because <laughs> uh, I, I kept telling myself the whole time, you know, we were all, it, it gets a little frustrating when you have an album done for a year and you're like, God, is this ever going to come out, you know, and then, um, but I kept telling myself the whole time, it's like, you know what, as soon as we release the first, like, songs, the first new single and let people know we're still alive, like, 
I will completely have forgotten about how long it took to get there. <laughs> and I mean, that's what happened. We released things to be different. And, and then, you know, blacklist and then kill everything. And the response has been absolutely awesome. And I'm going to jinx it right now, but kill everything still on YouTube. We just released a few days ago and it has zero dislike. <laughs> I'm like, I almost don't want to talk about it because then some asshole is just going to go on YouTube and dislike it. Yeah, you screwed yourself. <laughs> Not that it really matters, <laughs> but, you know, it's just kind of funny to me. <laughs> no, definitely. It, it, you know, it was right. I did kind of feel it when, it, when you guys did reemerge. I was like, oh, this is, it's all going to happen really fast. But what struck me most interesting is, I don't know, it, when the first album came out, everyone was like, oh, they're like Linkin Park for a new generation of people. And so I think a mm -hmm. lot of people assumed that album two would be your Meteora, and that is not what you have made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm really interested to see what everyone thinks, just because the album is very close to me. I mean, you know, we, we made it ourselves. So it's one of those things like you look at a picture of yourself from five years ago, and you're like, when did I get so much older? But it's like, you know, you see it every day, and you experience it every day, and you sit with it for so long. Um, so it, to me, it's like, it's really not a whole lot different, but then I really think about it and it really kind of is. So, um, I, mean, I think it's like a good progression that we made. I mean, obviously we, we, you know, <laughs> did what we thought was best and we wrote the kind of music that we want to listen to the kind of music we want to make. And, um, I'm really, really happy with the final result. So I really can't, I mean, there's an acoustic song on it. Like, I don't think anyone's expecting that at all. So I'm, I'm really excited to see, you know, what the reaction and what like the fan, cause the fan favorite songs are always like different from our favorites so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing like which you know a couple of those songs like emerge as like a fan favorite or whatever well i can give you some right now because i have three favorite songs okay so, yeah, let me, yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm interested to hear so yeah. you want to know what songs jump out to me because uh because uh, i i found it interesting the songs you chose you've chosen to release so far because none of them would make my top three but they're all good songs um yeah, yeah. <laughs> my top three would be crawl your way out Ghost in the Walls, and probably Summoner's Rift. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, Crawl Your Way Out and Ghost in the Walls. Crawl Your Way Out, I think, is the overall band favorite, all of ours. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we wanted to kind of – we released Things to Be Different first because that's, you know, probably the heaviest song behind Summoner's Rift, and it's, like, very, um, you know, like, fast tempo, and it's, like, something we would never had done before. So we wanted to, like – the first couple songs we wanted to release, just, like, really, like – showcase like how how different the new album is i guess um because like uh i mean i think like crawl your way out could have been on the first album granted it's, it's more polished and i think it's just better songwriting in general but it's one of those you know it's, it wouldn't be out of left field if you heard it like you know no. come out you know a few months after collapse or something it's definitely a continuation song it's like the one that ties the two records together yeah yeah, yeah. exactly i think that song is like our new not necessarily like our new single like paper thin was for the first album but like paper thin for the first album we thought was the best song that showcased like what we did as a band it had the rapping had the singing had the screaming it's just, like a little bit of everything and i feel like crawl your way out is kind of the uh flagship song for the new album in a way just like it's like it kind of bridges that gap between collapse and blacklist um but yeah we, we love that song that was like i think like the fourth song we wrote and we listened to we did a Europe tour last year or I guess it was two years ago now and we wrote it right before we left for Europe so we like listened to it on the plane you know like a 14 hour flight I listened to it probably like a hundred times I was just like so happy with it and uh, I mean maybe that's why it's our favorite we wrote it and then went to Europe and toured for in Europe for three months <laughs> or three weeks uh, but yeah I, I really like that song and Summoner's Rift I think is like uh, maybe the heaviest song on the album. And I really, really like that one too. And it's a little nod to League of Legends, which me and Tyler play a lot. <laughs> you can't really call a song Summoner's Rift without it being excruciatingly heavy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really. And like, we were like, should we call the song Summoner's Rift? Because we just thought it'd be, you know, we're huge fans of League of Legends and stuff. And um, the gaming community has actually done a lot for us as a band. Like I remember, uh, when Collapse came out, there were, like, a few really big, like, Call of Duty or um, Counter-Strike montages with our songs featured in it, and they had, like, way more, like, subscribers than we would, could dream of, like, as a band, and uh, so, yeah, there were, like, so many, like, cool, like, video game montages coming out using our songs, and we just thought that was so cool, so, um, yeah, we're, like, huge League, fa league fans, and um, we were, like, let's just fucking do it, who cares, you know what I mean, if anything, people that know about League of Legends will think it's fucking awesome. You know? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, and it's pretty. It's a pretty fitting name for like the heaviest song on the album. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things that like people who get the reference will think it's cool, and people who don't will just think it sounds cool. Like it, it's yeah, just, they just it, think it's another you know song name. You know? It's just another <laughs> so it's like, heavy song name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like any <laughs> song title from Winds of Plague. You, they, they just sound cool. <laughs> Basically, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, pretty much. It's all just like war and summoner and executioner and things like that, where you're just like, that's tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, now. So, what's your favorite song on the record right now? Um, I, mean, it cha- I feel like it changes weekly. Uh, um, I assume. But I would probably say, I don't know if it's my favorite, but I really like Glass on Water just because it's a little it different. different. I don't know, like, um, it is that different. song, like, this week, I've been listening to it a lot. And I'm like, wow, this song is, like, it's, like, one of those songs I almost forget that we put on the record. And I listen <laughs> to it, I'm like, wow, this song's fucking cool. Like, I love this song. Yeah. Are you, but, gonna, uh, are you one of those uh, bands that write, like, a, a bunch more songs than we actually end up getting on the album? I know there's, like, ten songs on the record. So how many would you, would you write? Well, now we are. Like, um, <laughs> when Collapse came out, everything happened so fast, and we got signed before the album was done. It was kind of, like everything we wrote just was on the album and that was it and we didn't really write anything different but um i mean i remember the week collapse came out tyler and i were working on i think uh, what became inside out um and i mean so we've been writing since then and we probably wrote not full songs i would say like the structure to probably 30 songs and cut it down to 10 or 11 and uh, so this time we had that luxury of being able to you know really like sit down and write a bunch of stuff and you know a lot of the songs are like frankenstein monsters of you know other song ideas that we had and stuff Mm -hmm. uh but uh yeah this time we had the luxury to really like sit down and just write the music as it came to us and really pick and choose what we wanted to put on the album (laughs) and uh so that was great and i mean we're already writing album three and we're gonna do the same thing for them so um i mean i can't wait for (laughs) can't wait for black to come out finally but it's like old to me now like i've listened to it for so long but uh, yeah, all the new stuff we're working on is really cool too. Yeah, when was um, when when was at least the first mix of this record finished? Um, the first mix of this, I would say probably June of 2015. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, it was like right before the I Prevail tour. We we finished it. Um, that was the first mix, at least. So that's like and, 18 uh, months. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's been, we could have we could have two babies. Since then. <laughs> I was just about to make that joke. Like you have two kids. Yeah. Now. Do you have fans well, yeah, that have probably had two kids since then? <laughs> probably, yeah. Like, <laughs> actually, I have one of my good friends. He will have had his second kid. Is it's due um, on the day our album comes out. <laughs> well, there you go, man. <laughs> and, and so he's going to be a little blacklist baby. You know, unless he comes, decides to peek out a day early or day late or whatever. But, uh, mm. but yeah, so he, yeah, I remember he had his first kid, like, right after the album came out. And now he's having a second one. So it really is <laughs> kind of like, it's pretty weird uh, uh, looking at it from that way. Well, now that we're talking about the end of the album, we might as well get on it. Because uh, I always love it when a heavy band does the acoustic closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so let's talk about let's talk about that. I mean, I guess it's is it technically your first ballad? I guess it's a ballad. Um, uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, like I think the closest thing we would have to that, which is very different, but would be like unmade on the first album. Yeah, so it was this like, is definitely you know, yeah. So this is definitely like the closest to a ballad we've got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, we didn't expect to you know do an acoustic song at all, and we had toyed around with doing acoustic versions of other songs of ours, and um. It's just one of those things we just kind of wrote it and it happened and we were really, really happy with it. And um, we're like, let's just put it on the album. You know, if anything, it's just a little something extra that people won't expect um, from us, you know. And uh, man, I love that song. That's one of my, that's probably like my second favorite song on the record. Um, And it's like, it's my girlfriend's favorite song, (laughs) stuff like that. Uh, It's really, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. People that are really familiar with us are going to think it's really different. People that aren't, I think it's just a, a good enough song to stand on its own um but yeah I, I love that song i can't wait to see what people think about that one probably <laughs> the most just because it's so different well it is it is a nice surprise because i feel like i feel like a lot of blacklist is almost heavier than what you've done in the past and then you get to track 10 especially after a song like glass on water and you're just like oh oh i didn't know i didn't yeah. know i didn't know we could do this too <laughs> yeah yeah um man, what was it? yeah that's what i was gonna say sorry i lost my train of thought um but yeah like it's i it's weird because like fans are like, is this album heavier than Collapse? And we're like, kind of like I think so. Like there's not as much 
like screaming and like generic breakdowns i think you know because mm-hmm. those are easy we want to try to kind of stay away from those and uh we're just kind of like done writing you know typical breakdown stuff um so i think this new album we in a way it is heavier and i think it's just like edgier and has more attitude than class did and um even though there's not you know a ton of screaming and stuff uh i mean it's a couple songs there is but um yeah like so it is yeah I, i'm glad you think that too because i think it is like heavier and just a little more aggressive than collapse was um yeah i just think it has more balls i guess <laughs> no i was curious the more i listened to it is are, are you trying to tell is there like one coherent would you say there's like one big theme that kind of laces all the way through the record because the first i would say the first four or five songs are, are pretty us versus them you versus me but then the back half gets a little bit more internalized it's a lot more i stuff yeah, I don't know if we, like, I don't think we really planned on that. It was just, like, um, at the time, we, you know, had, like, relationships that had fallen apart with, like, close friends of ours and stuff. Um, and then this time around, it's kind of, like, like, collapsed. We had a few songs like that that were kind of, like, fuck you to people that said we couldn't do it or people that we thought were our friends that, you know, because it happened so fast, people were saying, like, what the fuck, this band, like, got signed already and they haven't even, like, played a local show. And it's, like... But yeah, I mean, we played hundreds of local shows in our old bands. It's not like we didn't earn it, you know. Um, we didn't put the work in or something. But uh, so this album, I would say, like the overall theme is kind of more like we don't really need those people, and we realize that now. And they're like, like Blacklist is kind of about like some people in the music industry that have uh, kind of you know wrote us off or said we couldn't do it, and it's like we don't fucking need you anyways. Like we'll still we'll still do it. We'll still write a cool record, and that fans will like. Um, but yeah, that is interesting. I never really thought about it that way. How the first is like us versus them first half and the second half is yeah. More internalized. Like you said, that definitely wasn't intentional, but that is kind of interesting. Um, I haven't looked at it that way, obviously that's pretty cool. Well, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I didn't know if it was uh, planned or not. I kind of assumed not because it does get a little messy and halfway through, but it is the front half is very much, especially songs like obviously kill everything and blacklist is there's a lot of us versus them kind of thing. We're, yeah. We're like, yeah. But then, uh, but then, Ghost in the Walls through, through the end, really, there, it's a lot more of like you, it's a little bit more first person. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Well, that's that is really cool. I like that. I like that you noticed that. <laughs> that is, that's pretty interesting to me. Cause, well, because for the first half of the album, I was like, man, this is really a call to arms. And then I get to the back half, and I was like, I don't know what he's doing. No, no, because I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure the other way where you kind of overthink it, and you're like, I don't know that he's thought it through as much as I have at this point. Like, no, now I'm yeah. thinking about it more than you have. <laughs> yeah, and like when we put the album, when we put the track list together, we, I remember we all sat down and we were like really torn on what song should be number five and what should be number eight. And it really, at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter, but no. um, we just wanted to, we wanted to feel like a natural kind of like sway and just to have the songs flow together really well. And the, um, so, yeah, yeah, it definitely wasn't intentional. We just kind of did it all after the fact. Um, mm. I mean, definitely we put, you know, the acoustic song at the end of this summer just because it's out of left do. field and it's just, yeah. Yeah. And you close the album with a ballad, you know, yeah, um, yeah, that's just classic. But yeah, I remember sitting. Yeah, I remember <laughs> sitting down and putting together the track list, and we just, it just felt right. So I guess, uh, I mean, maybe subconsciously we kind of realized that in a way. But uh, worked yeah, out. Yeah, I don't know. It worked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm glad it worked out. So, uh, can we expect a video release from you guys in the near future? Very soon. Yeah, um, we just got the first cut back yesterday of the Kill Everything video. Mm-hmm. And um, barring any major like edits or you know anything, um, we're hoping to release it you know on or right around when the album comes out. Uh, I mean, ideally we would release it the day the album comes out on the 27th. Um, and then we also have a video for Blacklist um, that we actually shot like a year ago <laughs> on tour <laughs> in Atlanta with a good friend of ours, Aaron, and um, he's getting to work on that I think this week. So I mean, we'll I don't know how we're going to space it out yet. Um, but we'll have that video done very soon. So, and I'm really excited with what we have of both of them. They're really, really cool. Um, and Collapse, you know, we did we did release that album. We didn't have a video until, you know, eight months later, I think, something like that. So this time around, we already have one video out. We're going to release another album, another video right when the album comes out, and then another video, you know, a few weeks later. Um, so this time we'll have three albums out before we had one on the old record. <laughs> so, um, and we're planning on shooting more, too. We want to kind of do – we're, we're – we would love to do a few extra videos, um, you know, later on down the album cycle ourselves. It's just as like, they don't have to be like, you know, super professional videos, but just something, a visual, you know, 
A to go along with some of the songs that we really like. Um, mm. But yeah, so we should have two brand new videos coming out really, really soon within the coming you know, weeks. So. Well, that's great. Uh, you guys are a pretty visual heavy band. I think a lot of people associate you guys with visuals. So I'm always curious what you got up your sleeve. Yeah, yeah. I think the two new videos are really, really cool. Like um, the new, the, new uh, the Kill Everything video we shot in LA um, the day before the tour started. And uh, it's really cool. It's like a very different for us. And the performance stuff looks awesome. We have like a little bit of a storyline with it too. And uh, it was a lot of me and Tyler out in the rain. And it was actually freezing cold rain in LA, which you don't think of when you think of LA. But it, <laughs> it was pouring rain and it made the video look that much cooler. Because uh, I remember when we showed up to the video shoot and the director, um, he was like, I like to do this thing with bands called Will You, Won't You? Just to see like what you guys will do. He's like, are you guys cool with getting wet and like laying in puddles in the rain and we're like fuck yeah <laughs> he's like all right cool it's gonna be a good video uh so yeah I'm, I'm really excited for people to see both of these new videos and now uh this will be out before the album's out do you guys have a stream locked in already like a site premiere of some kind you're gonna release it yourselves early there may be i'm just out, i might be out on that. <laughs> there's just so much stuff going on right now waiting on the call we would. yeah i would imagine we would and there probably is and i'm just no, I don't know about it right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to look into that. I, I just assumed we would, you know, like a few days yeah. before the album comes out, stream the whole thing somewhere. Yeah. Um, that's what happened. So yeah, I'll have to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a fair, that's a fair thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yesterday I was like, so out of the loop, I was like, when are we getting the physical record, like to sell on tour, you know? Cause like usually you, you get it shipped out, you know, a few days early and sell it a few days early or whatever. And uh, so I just found out that yesterday and <laughs> all that stuff. It's like hard keeping up with all this shit and playing these shows every day. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't give it for, you know, wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I'm having the absolute time of my life out here. So, Well, that's great to hear, man. I, uh, I'm excited to see how people react to this record. For you, like, is, is there something on the horizon that you look to as like, this record will be a success if blank? Or is, for you, is it just like, I made the best record I could. I'm happy with it. I mean, at, at the end of the day, we're really happy with it. Um, <laughs> and we're really excited for Kill Everything to go to radio. Um, and so if we have a little bit of luck and people like it enough to, like, you know, call in and request it, that would be, like, a dream. That would be, you know, um, like, the radio crowd is such a different crowd from what we're used to playing. And I, I don't think it's very different for us. And we, we do have a lot of those fans, like, that come out to shows that um, – and we have a lot of people, you know, they don't even listen to heavy music at all, and they, like – took the went with their cousin or something and they they found our band they really really liked us like i didn't think think i would like a band like you guys but it's so good it's like right up my alley like um so at the end of the day i just i just want to you know keep touring and um you know making a living out of this and uh so i would just be happy with that you know but um the overall goal it would be a dream if you know it kill everything went to radio and it did well and then we released another song on radio and it did well and uh we would love to tour with a band like like Papa Roach or someone that has that, you know, built in radio crowd. They've been on the radio for fucking years since I was in high school and they still put out killer records and they have, you know, um, I think we wouldn't be foreign to any of their fans at all. Like our style of music, especially with the new album. Um, so uh, yeah, I just think, you know, if we get, got like a little bit of radio play, it would open up those doors to tour with like some other different kinds of bands and stuff like bands I grew up listening to. Um, so I guess that's like the overall, you know, goal. But at the end of the day, I'm just happy that we wrote a cool album, and I think people are really gonna like it. I feel like the radio play angle will be at least, if nothing else, you'll at least get into that world of like rock festivals that kind of dominates the summer. That would be great. Are you there? Did I lose you? Hello. Hello. Andy. Hey. Yeah. No. Whoa. Hey. Lost. Are you there? Minute. Yeah. Lost you for a minute. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> nope. I can hear you, but you couldn't hear me. No. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um. No. I completely lost my train of thought and stuff. It was, it's fine. It's cool. We'll get back there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fine. No. No. no that's fine. <laughs> uh. No. I completely understand what you're, what you're saying though about you know wanting to get there i just think that this could get you guys to that level because i you know last summer i kind of dedicated myself to doing the rock festival circuit because i was like I, there's all these bands like you said that have been playing in bands that are been Hello? together hey i'm here can you not hear me now are we getting like a dead zone or something oh my gosh Hello? i'm here i'm here i'm here 
Hello. Think, hello. Hello. Hey, hey are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, we we must be driving to a dead zone or something right now. All right. <laughs> I don't know what's okay. going we'll on. We'll see what happens. Um, basically, yeah. I just uh, I do think that this record could get you guys into that world of rock festivals, if nothing else. You know, like uh, like yeah, the because it's a huge circuit. Like if you can get into one of them, you can get on like thirty of them in a summer. Yeah, exactly. Like we did Rock in the Range last year, um, and that was like so cool. One because it was almost like a hometown show. It was in Columbus, and two, it was you know one of the biggest rock festivals around. And we did really, really well on that, like way better than we thought we would do. And that was like our first taste of that, you know, like that radio circuit and stuff. Um, and I mean, every band, of course, wants to be on the radio and stuff. And, you know, it's just like that's like a pillar or milestone of a certain amount of success, I guess. But um, I have a really good feeling about it. I think, you know, if we just have, you know, the right timing, a little bit of luck and people like it enough that we could do that. And I would, you know, fucking love to do that, obviously. So. No, I, and I think it'd be great for, for you. It's, it's that thing, it's weird because like in, in the genres of alternative music where Danger Kids exist and you and I kind of work within, it's everyone kind of, there's a lot more niches to it. But if you can get into radio rock, it's almost like country where like people will just go because it's a rock show. Exactly, exactly. Like, and those kind of fans are awesome. Like they're very um, open-minded fans and they're not, like I feel like like the scene we're in, not necessarily the scene we're in because again, like you said, there's so many different niches and stuff. Um, a lot of people, they only like the really heavy bands that do a ton of screaming and that's it. And if you sing, they, they don't care what your live show is like. They just want to hear screaming. And, um, so yeah, like that radio crowd, I think is more just like open-minded and, you know, we'll give anything a chance. And those are the kind of fans you would, you love to put yourself in front of, you know? Um, but I mean, again, I feel like we could do that and then still tour with a band like Issues or Motionless the Light or Falling in Reverse. And cause I mean, I mean, all those bands are huge too. And like Motionless has, has had some radio play on their last album. And um, I mean, all these bands on this tour are fucking killer. Like, it's such a cool tour to be on. And, like, they're such friendly people. But, yeah, I kind of got off track there. But <laughs> and you're um, fine. <laughs> I don't know. I think we could still bridge that gap between, you know, every different kind of music scene, like, out there, like, alternative and rock stuff. <laughs> well, I know you guys are on the road, so I don't want to keep you for too much longer. I, I do want to say that I always love talking to somebody like you because we're, we're both from Ohio, from the Midwest, and we, we understand what yep, it's like yep. where we come from, and I love seeing you succeed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and you were one of the first reviews I think we had when Flaps came out. It oh, may yeah. be the first. I'm not sure. Yeah, so. definitely when <laughs> definitely when the singles first started popping up, we were on top. I don't know about the actual album, but when the singles started popping up, I was definitely on yeah, the, the, yeah, the singles. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, the, my the, bad. The, yeah, who, the um, who the hell is this band guy? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like my first taste of seeing like a like a review of a song or something like that for you know. Well, our stuff like my old band didn't go anywhere but we never had reviews or anything like that <laughs> so i don't know that's just so cool to me i love seeing what people think um, well but yeah well, i mean man. It's, it's, i love talking to you this, is, this has been uh awesome it's a good way to pass the time because i mean we're just fucking driving so. <laughs> <laughs> well you guys don't come to i'm in minneapolis now you guys aren't coming here on this tour so we'll have to wait till whatever you're doing next yeah yeah and again like i've been telling people you know we didn't hit ohio on this tour we tried to make it happen but the drive was just a little bit too long and it would be a lot of backtracking and if we had any bad weather at all it would you know we'd miss the the next show mm -hmm. um but we want to try to you know hit a lot of these states um that we're not hitting on this tour and i mean the album's coming out this month so we're going to be touring a lot this year in support of that um so i'm sure we'll be hitting you know everything else that we missed on this tour very soon oh yeah definitely and you get to do your album release show in new york city it doesn't really get much better than that yeah that, i think that's like the biggest show on the tour so we'll probably be playing in front of like 3,500 people the day the album comes out we have a bottle of champagne in the trailer ready to celebrate <laughs> <laughs> already i like it <laughs> yeah yeah so we i can't what a what a cool you know and i love the new york shows that we do like new york's have it's hell driving through in a van and trailer but the crowds are always awesome. The fans are awesome. And, um, yeah, I can't, what a fitting, you know, show and venue um, and city to have our album release in. Well, last thing I was going to ask you is just for, for people coming out to this tour, I mean, how many, how many of the new songs are you putting on the list? What should people be learning the words to? Um, Kill Everything, Blacklist, and Things Be Different are the three new ones we're playing. Um, just because those songs are out and people um, – it's, it's amazing how many people have known the words for the new songs. Like, Kill Everything, people were singing along last night. It's just, wow, this song came out, you know, three days ago. So, um, yeah, those three we play, um, they're new. 
um, and then we play like a couple older ones. We just want to do a good mix since the album, you know, isn't out yet, but will be for the second half of the tour. Uh, just wanted to, you know, it's it's much more fun playing to a crowd that knows the words, <laughs> and it just makes you feel that much. Like we played, you know, these new songs in the past, and people liked it and they get into it and they move around, but you know, they don't know the words. They don't really know what to expect. Uh, but yeah, we're playing those three. Um, those are the three new ones we're playing in this tour. And then, you know, next tour, I would like to put a lot more new stuff in our set list. I, I look forward to hopefully catching you guys. I still haven't seen the Danger Kid live show, so I'm excited. Hopefully this is the year. Yeah, we've only played only played Minneapolis once, I think. Um, it's a weird city where, like, rock shows, like, rap is big here. Not rock is Yeah. Much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I get it, but this is the year. I mean, if I have to come to Chicago, I have to come to Chicago. That's just how it works. Yeah, yeah. I got a lot of friends and family coming out to like Nashville, and Chicago, and stuff to catch up on the tour. So exactly. All right, man. Yeah, hopefully we'll be there soon. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you enjoy the road, but I love the record, and I wish you the best of luck. I think it's going to be a good year for you. All right, dude. I have a good feeling, and I'm glad you think that too. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I loved hearing, you know, your thoughts on the new album and stuff, nice. and. Uh, yeah, it's been great talking to you, man. So. Definitely. We'll, we'll talk again soon. I'll reach out to you on Twitter or something, but thanks so much for doing this. All right, yeah, yeah, no problem. Pleasure's online, man. Have a great show tonight. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks, man. Bye. See you later.